Hello everyone. Welcome to the first video of chapter 4. In this chapter, we'll start learning something called duality. Together with convexity, duality is the second most important concept in linear programming. So let's get started. So this is um, the first subchapter, chapter 4.1. Here we will give an introduction to the um, concept called duality and by going through an example. So we will now visit the blending model. This is example 2.2.1 and uh, we studied it earlier. And now let's revisit it. So the setting is the following. Um, we have a farmer who uses two feeds. Let's call it F1 and F2. And then three nutrients are important. We just say A, B, and C. And here we have the table to um, represent all the informations. So feed one, nutrients A, B, C, are the, the amount is here per unit of feed one. And here's the cost. And for feed two, and these are the amount of nutrients in one unit, and that's the cost. So it's a bit cheaper because it's not very nutritious. And then there is the daily um, minimum requirement that you need to have 60 units of A, 84 units of B, and 72 units of C. Okay. We shall be very familiar with this example. Yeah, but uh, we're going to um, look at this problem um, from different perspective. First, from the farmer's perspective. This is the one that we have been doing. So we will introduce two variables, x1, x2. That is the amount of feed one and the feed two that you would use on a daily basis. Okay, with that being denoted the variables and then we can set up our minimization problem. So the farmer wishes to minimize his cost, which will be 10 times x1, that's the unit of f1, and 4 times x2, that's how much of feed 2 you use. Add them up, that's the total cost. You want to minimize that, subject to a bunch of constraints. So first, these two are non-negative quantities, they're restricted. And then for each nutrient, and you, as you go down this table, you get a constraint. So 3x plus 2x, 3x1 plus 2x2 shall be bigger than 60. That's the first one. And you do the same thing for nutrients B and C, and you get the second and the third constraint. Okay, so this is what we have done in chapter 2, viewing the whole thing from the farmer's perspective. Okay, so um, then this problem can be rewritten in standard form and then for the canonical form, we can solve it in LP Assistant. The solution is uh, Z, the minimum cost is 144 cents, which is attained at 621. That means X1 is 6, X2 is 21. So you'll be using less of feed one, but more of feed two. That minimizes the cost. Okay. So and let's take a look at the LP assistant tableau. Okay. So here is the tableau of using LP assistant. Um, it might be a bit small in the video screen, and you can print out the. Um, video handouts and then you can zoom the PDF and then you see it better but uh, we are all familiar with this process already so what's being set up here is the standard problem mm, and you get negative ones because you change the constraint from inequality to equality and then you add three artificial variables to make it canonical and then you have this W the auxiliary um, value to um, minimize, then you first minimize this one here by pivoting. So pick negative 13, you choose this point to pivot, and then you have the second part, 
and you see we still have two negatives so I choose this column I pivot here and then I get the second part and then you see I still get two negative numbers I pick this one I choose this one to pivot then I get this fourth part of the tableau now I see this is all zero so W has reached zero then I I don't need that anymore and then I can pivot on the for Z which has one negative coefficient and if I pivot here I get this tableau so I throw away the last one which is not needed anymore and then we see that um, all these are um, positive because now I neglect this part okay and then we see the solution is uh, then 144 it's obtained at x1 is 6 x2 is 21 and there is an x5 72 so pay attention this x5 is not the original variable it is a slack variable that we added for the third constraint so the slack variable is actually positive at the minimum point which means the third um, constraint is satisfied with a strict inequality there is slack there okay so um that's a, a quick summary of uh, what happens in the solution of this okay now um here comes the new part a new concept we want to introduce let's say in a market like that as we have described comes in a competitor a supplier that wants to com compete so he wants to offer possibly better price and satisfying the farmers nutritional value needs and uh, at the same time maximize his own profit so how should he price his supply So this is a little bit like a game theory. Okay, so how do you price your um, food, your feed? Well, as we have noticed that if a feed contains higher nutritional value, it's somewhat more expensive. Otherwise, it's less expensive. So this competitor would consider the nutrition content of his feed and probably price it accordingly so let's say for nutrition a b and c each unit i would consider it costs y1 y2 y3 to be the price per unit of a b c respectively okay Okay, so um, here we repeat um, the, ta the table of information. Now I put unit price for nutrition A, Y1, for B, Y2, for C, Y3 in here. So it's a bit easier for us to see. So how can the supplier um, set up a, an optimization problem? Okay, so let's look at the price for feed one assuming the price is solely determined by its nutrition value the price for f1 would be 3y1 that's how much nutrition a would cost in it and 7y2 for b and 3y3 for c and you add these up that will be the price for f1 and then this supplier needs to remain competitive. He cannot offer his price to be higher than what is already available in the market, otherwise the farmer won't buy it. So you should have this less than the existing price that becomes a constraint. So you have this sum here, less than 10, as one constraint. Then a similar argument can be made for feed 2 and you add up the, the price for feed 2 and it should be less than 4. Okay, so under the price y1, y2, y3, what will be the profit for the... 
supplier? Well, um, so the supplier will get give um, 60 units of nutrition A totally of daily supply. So that will give him 60 times Y1 if he sells it. And then 84 times Y2 and 72 times Y3. That will be the total price he could charge. And you add them all up and that becomes his total profit. Okay, so um, let's summarize what we have talked about on the previous slide. So this is the table of information. And we see that for the supplier's viewpoint, um, he has a maximization problem. And we call this problem D. And uh, the original problem from the view of the farmer, we call it L. So this problem D now is a maximization problem. Maximize um, zeta, which is the profit of the supplier, subject to constraints. Variables are restricted. And these two, that is, um, the supplier needs to be competitive. So his price for F1 shall be less than 10, and his price for F2 shall be less than 4. Okay? So um, this looks very different from the original problem from the farmer's viewpoint. But uh, nevertheless, it's a linear programming problem because we see the constraints are linear and the pr um, kind of a, the objective function is a, a fine one. And we can um, solve this with uh, what we have learned, we can write this in standard form and by adding slack variable, which will be in canonical form, and we can solve it in LP Assistant. Okay, so here is the tableau in LP Assistant. So, um, so the constraints, um, by adding slack variables for, for constraint 1 and slack this one, x5 or 2, we get a, a, a standard form which is also um, canonical. Okay, And then here is the thing you have to be careful. The problem is a maximization. And then for the standard problem, we need to do minimization. So I need to add minus sign in front of everybody. So that's why these are negative. Then you do your pivoting, so you know very well. Pick a negative one, find the column to pivot, and you get the second tableau. You have a negative one, you find the column to pivot, and you get the third part, and then you still have a negative one, and you find the column to pivot, and then you get this part. And now you see they're all positive, the coefficients. So you have reached your... Um, Minimum, so the minimum for the negative of the profit is 100, negative 144, right? So um, here is a twist. So the minimum of negative of zeta is minus 144. And then for the maximization problem, the maximum will be the negative of that negative, so which is actually 144. And this is attained at x1 is 1 and... Uh, Okay, so here is actually the y's, but but uh, LP assistant calls every all the variable x. So it's y one is one, and then y two is two, and y three is zero. Okay. So what does this mean? Is that the supplier should charge one price, one dollar or one cent, whatever unit that is, for each unit of nutrition A and also one price one for each unit of nutrition B and then for nutrition three uh, nutrition C it should come for free okay so I went through the um, LP um, LP assistant computation rather fast and I encourage you to Put that in by yourself and then work it out and see if you get the same answer. Okay, so here comes the real question. Do you think the farmer in this supply 
would reach a deal? Let's look at the answer we obtained for problem L and problem D. So, from the farmer's viewpoint, he has a minimum cost, which is 144 cents. And for the um, new supplier, he has a maximum of his profit. And we see that Z mean exactly equal to Z max. That means they have a deal. Okay, so hopefully through this example, um, we have um, not convinced you, but uh, um, put the idea in your head that the problem D is very much related to the problem L. They are tightly connected. Okay, so this problem D actually is called the dual of L, which we'll define more rigorously later. We now make some observations about the relation between the problem L and the problem D. We see that L is a minimization problem and D is a maximization problem. So that is changed. Secondly, about the way you obtain the constraint. So in the type in the, our table that's given for the problem L, we would go down the column to add up and to get the constraint. And in the problem D, we would go right along each row to get the constraint. And third, for the problem L, our constraints are bigger than equal inequality sign, but for D, the constraints are less than equal inequality sign. And there are some um, relations between them in the detail of their calculation in the simplex method, um, which we'll look at the LP assistant tableau. Okay, so here are the two tableaus side by side. On the left is for the problem L, the, from the farmer's viewpoint, and then this is the problem D from the supplier's viewpoint. I want to catch your attention for the um, last tableau where you conclude. So um, here um, we know that um, x4, x5 are slack variables and uh, here we have x1, x2 and x5 in the end as the basic variables here. So um, look at um, these three values, that's the coefficient in the objective function, and then look at these three values, those are the value of the basic solution. They are the same, 72, 6, 21, 72, 6, 21. And then if you look at the other way around, look at the coefficient of the objective function for this problem, 1, 1, and then look at the right-hand side, the solution of the basic solution at the optimal point, 1, 1. Again, they are the same. And then the optimal value here is just the uh, optimal uh, opposite sign of each other. Okay, so, so we have um, evidence or suspicion that these two problems are actually very closely related to each other. Okay, so more details will come. So this video just serves as an introduction and then we'll give precise definition. We'll study in more detail theoretical aspects of it. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.